later on in uni, like I kind of picked up computer science because I was kind of soul searching, you know, like what do I want to do with my life? And <laughs> the, the, quick, the quick backstory about it was I'm good at math. We're like when I was in high school, that was the only subject that I really liked and I was really good at math. And so when I was going to uni, I was thinking, okay, well, what do I want to study? Um, I like, I'm good at math and I want to make money. So let's study finance. Like that's the extent of my logic. <laughs> um, and so when I was in uni, I slowly started to not want to do finance as a full-time job. It was like one of those things where I'm happy to know about finance and the knowledge that comes with it for my own sort of personal investing. But it wasn't something I wanted to do as a day job for the rest of my life. And so mm -hmm. at this point, I was kind of, like I said, I was soul searching about what I want to do. And being in a business degree, there was a lot of startup competitions going around. And mm -hmm. I've always wanted to make a business when I was a kid. Like one day I want to, uh, you know, make something happen. And so I was joining the startup competitions. And what's funny about startup competitions, especially at uni and college or whatever, because it's a business, right? You're making a business. Like 95% of the participants are business students. And mm -hmm. the rest 5% are, you know, computer science or some engineering, biomed or something. And so I was surrounded by too many business people and I was in so many different uh, groups where you have to like, you know, come up with an idea and then you make a business plan and you make a PowerPoint to then present to uh, like an investor. And I kept seeing this common pattern, w pattern, which is every group, including my group, it's like you have this billion dollar idea, like in the PowerPoint, right? In your pitch, mm -hmm. you have this brilliant billion dollar idea. And then this is how we do it, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, it's always like, okay, now we just need to hire a software engineer or a you know, programmer to build this thing. And mm -hmm. it kind of like really made me not happy about it. Like I didn't want to be one of those business people that, you know, just do business and you just outsource everything. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it didn't seem right to me. And I wanted to be one of those people that um, got my hands dirty in the tech. And so uh, at this point, that's when I really started to actually decide I want to create, you know, I want to like code, I want to make an app and, at this time, you know, I, al I was always interested in tech in general. And uh, so I was making Android apps with Java, which was my mm -hmm. first language. And, you know, just some basic calculator or something like that. And kind of similar to what you said. I mean, you said you started from Swift, the iOS. We, we come from mm -hmm. the opposite uh, mm -hmm. spectrum there. But when I was making Android apps, I use an iPhone. I mean, I I've also used many Android phones, but... You know, at the time I use an iPhone and my family use iPhone, everyone uses iPhone. So I want to make an iPhone app. And so I had to make a big decision. Like, okay, mm -hmm. do I want to be an Android developer and just go pure Android and maybe later I could pick up the other language or um, same thing on the other side. Like, do I want to just go pure iOS? Mm -hmm. And it kind of like coming from like that startup mindset, it kind of bummed me out that I had to pick one or the other. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I was kind of like, you know, Googling and seeing what's out there and I, found this whole cross-platform uh, cross platform like phenomenon. And I was like mm -hmm. React Native and there's Flutter. And I was like, okay, let me just do some research about, about this stuff. And, and kind of to your point about how easy it is to get started with Flutter, before I had to make a conscious decision about, okay, I'm going to commit to Flutter. I just was like, okay, let me just try it out. And it was just so easy to use, you know? Mm -hmm. And so ever since then, I just didn't stop. Because <laughs> it was just, I don't know, just like, when I was making Android apps, it didn't seem that easy. Like, it didn't seem that seamless, no. you know what I mean? <laughs> for some reason on Flutter, everything just felt so, I don't know, it just made sense to me. And Yeah, yeah, uh, totally. Um, yeah. yeah, I feel like for all like cross-platform solutions, um, they, they, all try to be, they all try to be right. They all try to be as easy as possible. And I, uh, this is, the feeling kind of hit me of how, like how difficult development is for, for um, app development is uh, started from like just um, iOS development because it feels like everything is just so overly complicated like you have all the the view constraints like just just like just to make something happen on the screen takes so much effort mm. like if you were to if you were to like follow a tutorial of how to make a list view on iOS it's incredibly complicated like oh you Wait, have really? to recycle <laughs> yeah like you have to like because um Back in the days, phones were really slow, so um, they mm. made it so that all the elements on screen, um, 
or at least in the list view, uh, will, will be recycled. Or so, um, so the the cells will, you know, they go out of the screen and then they will be they'll be recycled again to to use for for the for you know the items that 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 those are like coming up in the screen. Um, and you have to write like a hundred lines of code just to make a list view. It's just incredibly complicated. It, does, it doesn't feel right. And, and you write, you write all the code, you put in all the effort, and you end up just making one app for one platform. And then you have to start mm. over. It's, it seems very yeah. wrong. So so yeah. I, it was at that point I started looking into um, cross-platform solutions. So I looked into Zarmoring. I looked into uh, React Native. Yeah. I looked into uh, Ionic. <clears throat> mm. That was the web dev way. And then all of them feel slightly off like the 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 user experience that you end mm. up producing if you look at you know the apps that are that, that are made that were made by those technologies it, it didn't feel really, really good you know as good as native um except for flutter like flutter mm. apps feels really nice it feels like 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 wow like you know like it, it is like the animations all the um, you know the visuals that um, just you're capable of making it yeah. gives you this feeling of oh this is the the way that uh, you want you want to make apps y if you were to like get into flutter more um, many things that are uh, previously like very difficult um, for like in in the field of native devs become become like very easy um, just like dragging things like animation um like uh like page transitions like just there's so many things that you can customize with flutter that you have to spend days of effort doing in in native or in other technologies